schedule a free design consultation, and the more you buy, the more you'll save on blinds, shades, shutters, and more from Budget Blinds. Visit BudgetBlinds.com today. This is New Cap News with Annika Notveit. Good evening, and thank you for joining us. Being a parent can be overwhelming, especially for those with children who have a mental disability. Today, parents in the border city learned how to help their child have a full and meaningful life. Jeremy Thompson reports. Paul Forges and his wife Faye listen intently at the Means to a Good Life workshop. Their daughter Bria has autism. They came to the meeting for a new perspective on what she can accomplish. There's no limits to what she can do and there's no limits to what I can do. There's really no difference. The Forges encourage their daughter as much as they can, but have some very real fears when it comes to her future. People with disabilities are, have a 70 to 80 percent unemployment rate. So that is a natural worry and I'd like to have more communities aware of that so that we can have programs and workshops to have more awareness so that maybe that can change. That's where Bruce Uditsky comes in. To um, say Mary's University, I think it is. He's been involved in the mental disability field for over 40 years. His adopted son has a variant of fetal alcohol syndrome. Well, today he's uh, married, uh, works, um, babysits our uh, grandchildren. So what we're trying to do is help other families see how they can create the possibilities for their son or daughter, irrespective of the nature of the disability. Udiski says parents can feel overwhelmed by the challenges that come with raising a mentally disabled child, but wants them to know they're not alone. But the greater degree your child is valued and welcomed by the community, and the greater degree that they have an inclusive life, the more it is those challenges sort of drop by the wayside. From now on, that's something the Forges will work towards with Bria. You know, you get in that mode of, of linear thinking of, oh, well, that means she can't do this on her own, she can't do it on her own. That's all BS. It's encouraging to know that when we dream for her and we have these visions for her, that they can actually be uh, fulfilled. Jeremy Thompson, New Cap News. Basketball fans were treated to some cultural entertainment at last night's wrestlers game. <laughs> Aislinn Whitstone and her dance partner showcased their traditional Aboriginal athleticism. Whitstone is a member of the Dreamcatchers, the Native American cultural group at Holy Rosary High School. She says dancing helps her connect with her heritage. I feel really welcomed to be dancing here. When I'm out there dancing, I feel like happiness and I feel like I'm at home. It was a, a demonstration of unique Aboriginal talent and a nice break from basketball for the crowd. Well, it's an age-old art form, once seen mostly in majestic-looking churches. Stained glass classes are being offered at the Lloyd Minster Cultural and Science Centre this month. So Lori Nelson has been making stained glass art for three decades and says its popularity goes through ups and downs. It'll go through a cycle where it's very popular for a few years and then you don't hear about it for a few years. And uh, there's always a a small contingent of people who are interested. She teaches the basics of stained glass and says it's a good chance for people to find out if they're really interested in the task. They like the idea of it, but when it comes to cutting the glass and breaking it, it's um, sometimes kind of intimidating. Another challenging part is doing the foiling, which, which is a, a foil tape that we wrap around the edges of the glass. If anyone wants to take classes, Nelson says there's still room available and to contact the Cultural and Science Centre.